Hey, what's going on, everybody? I got this uh, 2000 Skag Turf Tiger. And what it did, I think the rear seal has gone out, the rear oil seal. It's just a Kohler 23 horse uh, Pro Command or whatever it's called. But yeah, I, you know, this clutch has been put on and we've had to replace a pulley. But this pulley inside, I think on that shaft is where all this residue's come down. As you can see, I got a container to catch oil. So uh, last year I was mowing with it last spring and oil got on the belt, flipped, it just wouldn't go. It slipped on the on the uh, pulleys. Um, so you had to check oil in it, but this time it just completely let go. So I'm assuming that seal has, has worked its way out. So I'm thinking about taking it in, getting it replaced. I want it to be right because... Uh, my oldest uh, sister, she she's widowed of two years, and she just bought a property. She's got some acreage, so she needs a mower, and I told her that she can have this one. Um, if she wants to take it in and get it fixed. So I'm just airing up the tires. We'll charge up the battery. It's already been serviced, greased. Oil's good. Every year, this thing's had the oil changed. It's, it's just been a beast, and with the hours, get over here, see if we can get the hours on here. It only has 922 hours, so these things are good for 1,500 hours plus. I mean, the motor is clean as a whistle inside. I know with the light, I don't know if we can see inside this engine. Nope, I don't have enough light. I need a flashlight. But anyway, it looks brand new in there. So I'm just going to throw the charger on here. Like I said, I already got the tires aired up. There was a short on these uh, battery cables, so I'm going to try to change out these um, throttle cable and the, uh, the old choke cable. So I'm going to do those two things and get that part done. It looks like we're going to need a battery cable too. So that way, she won't have to worry about that part. That'll all be taken care of. So let me get on this uh, cable here. I only got one. I'll have to order another one. So I'll go ahead and take this off to get this panel. Here's your controls. You got your uh, accelerator right here, your throttle. And here's your choke. So it just looks like we got one, two uh, bolts. And then there's one down here. One down here, and then of course a screwdriver to get this control mechanism. And if you follow these cables back, you know where they go is through this plate and into the throttle assembly on the carburetor. So I'm going to take this apart and get started on it. All right, just quick update: these uh, bolts they are seven sixteenths, and like I said, just standard Phillips screwdriver. And I had to move this thing. I didn't want to drive it because the the low oil level. I didn't want to add it; just have it leak out. So on these uh, older turf tigers like this one, you got your hydraulic pump, the screw. The only thing you have to do is you probably have to take something and break it loose, but you just turn it to the left. So this was seated all the way in to close those chambers in that hydraulic pump. And when you open this, you know, you actually um, de-stroke that chamber so it lets the fluid pass through. And on the opposite side, same pump. But of course, since it's the same, it's upside down, so that screws underneath. So those have been screwed out, and then you can just freewheel your Turf Tiger around. It'll move freely. Of course, once the tires are aired up, they're not too bad to move. Take two with a good ratchet. The other one was broke.
You gotta push up on them screws from the bottom with your finger or they just spin because they got little little nuts and a little uh, friction washer on there so you don't want to drop them Hang on to them. All right, so now that choke's loose. We should be able to fish it. Fish it right out of here, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Wow, that dude is close. <clears throat> All right, so your trick to getting these things out is you want to get your uh, cable unhooked where it fishes through this hole so we can still see on the uh, throttle cable right here and right here this one is still in there and on the back side it just just like a typical throttle cable it fishes around sticks out the other way why am i not seeing where i'm trying to show you there it is on the back side, so I don't know if you can see that cable or not. Yeah, you can just barely see the end of it right there where my thumb is. It just goes through and turns out. So once you pull that out, you can turn this whole assembly around because the way this is designed, you can't pull down this this brackets in the way. So when you go to tilt that out, it won't let you. You got to spin it completely around and then fish it out the other way. So that's how that piece comes out. All right, so now we get this piece off so we can get the other end of these cables unhooked. So just remove the air filter cover. All right. Air filter's a little dirty. Need to get that cleaned up. All right, so we'll get this out of here. It's nice and tight. Now we got access to our cables where they hook in here, and then we got the two little bolts that hold them down. So I'm going to do this choke cable today. So I need to take this out, which it looks like it's about a three eighths. So let me go get the wrench for that and we'll loosen that up. <clears throat> All right guys, I was wrong. It's a five sixteenths. So it's even smaller than I thought it was. All right, got it out of that keeper. Now we just got to fish it out of this hole like that so you can see what the ends look like on these. Just a little hook. If I can turn it towards the camera so you can see it. So it just goes in and wedges in place. So we got that one out.
Dang, on, that thing is in there. Okay. So here it is. Get the same end. So we'll fish this up in that first, in first. And then, we'll, oops, then we got the new same style cable here. See there? There it is. All right. So we'll try to fish this dude in here. So put it in upside down and backwards. Whoops. Get it spun around. There it is. All right. So now I got that there. And go ahead and bring this cable back where it needs to be on this side. And now the tricky part is getting these little tiny screws back in with that little friction plate washer and the nut in place. That lip makes it tough to get those in there. If the thing's fighting me, I'll get it over there out of the way. All right. Get a bolt in here. Got that. Grab this. Get my friction what friction washer on. Sure got enough room. Get this nut on there. Almost. <sighs> I think I got it started. Screwdriver. And once you get some tension on this, you don't have to hold it. That friction washer bites in and you can tighten it. I went ahead and pulled it up pretty tight. That way the other one's already seated. It'll be easier to put in place. So we'll get the bolt in, friction washer. Now the nut. Takes one to know one, so I know what it is. It is a nut. And we get this screwdriver in here. Cinch this one up. And those are in place. Get them. Get these nice and tight. All right. Those are snug, and pretty good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that mechanism is working fine. So this one, what it does is it feeds in. You can't just leave it here. It'll pinch when you bolt this back together. So there's a little hole underneath it where this cable's coming through. So you got to you got to fish it through there. I should have done that before I put it in place, I guess, but I forgot about it. But we got enough room. It's not going to hurt it. I can fish it in without causing any issues here. We don't want that to go under there and be in the uh, proximity of the battery. So there we go. There's that one in place. So now we're ready to come back here and hook up this end again. So 
what it's got to do is I think we want to fish it in to the little hole. There's a little hole right here. I think we can see that. See this little hole right there. There's a hole in that dude. And we've got to fish this thing in it. And then we can put it back in the keeper. So you just got to lift it up. Put it in the hole, fish all the way down, lay it down, and that's it. It's ready to work that. Sorry, it's ready to work that mechanism. It's in there. Now I got to get it under this keeper. That's in place. I'm gonna lose, leave this loose for now. This keeper, because I got to take out the throttle cable as well. Throw this in the scrap metal pile. And let's see if this is a three eighths as well. Looks looks like it, and it is. Might as well get a new air filter too while I'm at it. And usually the air filters, I just spray a little uh, fogging oil on those and make sure they're wrung out real well. That's why it's so dirty. It don't take but a few mowings. It traps the grease. There went my keeper. But it fell in the oil tray. I think I heard it. Yep. That was luck. Okay. There's the other keeper. Lay that to the side. Now I get this throttle cable out of here. Same thing. It's just under the uh, choke cable. So I can actually move this butterfly back to where I can see it. Lift it up, fish it out, and let it relax. Now we can work on getting this, this other uh, throttle mechanism out. So we're back to the Phillips head and holding on to those washers underneath. Shoot. Kept the washers, but I dropped the bolt. There it is right there. And it's right by these cute little mini pine cones that come off my pine tree. They're just teeny little things. <laughs> All right, move this throttle handle up out of the way, and then we'll get this, this other screw out. Just a little threaded machine screw, Phillips head drive on it. Got that. There's the nut. I dropped the little keeper washer. All right, we have a recovery of these little type washers. Found it. All right, now I gotta remember how I did the choke. So we wanna unhook. We don't have to unhook the cable. We can just spin this around a 360 and then conveniently fish it out. Pull our cable up through. And if we had our new one, we could go ahead and fish it in, but I don't have it yet. All right, guys, got that filter cleaned up and oiled. That uh, was brand new the spring I put it in, so it should be good for a season anyway. Went ahead and took this uh, red battery positive cable off because it had been compromised, the insulation. So I'm going to order one of them, put, on, put that on. I'll go ahead and throw the uh, trickle charger on there, the battery tender, and let that be charging that battery back up over time. So yeah, that's it. I hope it helped. You know, the only thing we got to do is once that other cable comes in, I'm going to put it in, and it's just the opposite of, of uh, taking it out, same as putting this one in. So we'll just run it. You know, once we get it in place, it'll come through this channel. See this channel down here? You run the cable under there. And of course, we'll mount it back in here with our screws. And then we'll just fish it up alongside this one. It comes in and it'll go under this. And actually, it'll hook into this, this throttle cable here. We'll just right, I'll just have to pull this back. And we'll put it in that, that last hole. 
can see it better over here, the end one. <clears throat> then when we get that done, we'll put our cables in place under both the keepers, screw them back in, and then we'll just have to put our cover back on and all that'll be complete. So I hope that helps. If you gotta change one of these uh, throttle or choke cables, that's about all there is to it. All right, guys, we've got the uh, battery charging up, a little tender. It's just a 1.5 uh, slow, slow charge. Uh, you can get these at Walmart pretty cheap. So you can see it's charging. So that's really good to charge battery slow. And these are invaluable through the winter just to keep your battery fresh until, of course, it won't hold a charge. But it'll lengthen the life and make springtime much easier. And you don't have to leave it on all the time. won't hurt it but you could put it on a month here and there, it's really cold, or a month before you need to, to get this out, or it wouldn't even take that long. But yeah, this Turf Tiger has been a beast. I love the way it mows. And uh, I brought my light, I'll see if I can show you guys down this engine. Castrol GTX, just the regular formula. That's what I changed this each spring. And look in there, you can see down inside, it's hard to get the light in the camera. That engine, it looks brand new. I mean, there's no like paraffin coating or anything or no sludge. It's perfect in there. So routine maintenance definitely pays off. Like I said, it's had at least 20 oil changes. It's been a great mower. And then what I did, I spent money, which was probably not the best thing. And I got this uh, simplicity it's the same mo width 61 inch cut but you know there's a lot of bumpy ground here there's five acres and it's a uh, out in the rural area so this discharge chute is no big deal but it's got the electronic fuel injection it's got the uh, Vanguard oil guard EFI engines well I already said that electronic fuel injection but Plus it's got a suspension seat, so it rides like a Cadillac. It's a little harder to maneuver and control. I was uh, much faster on the uh, Turf Tiger, but this thing has done me well for 20 years, 20, well, it was 22 years actually I mowed with it. So I can't complain and it's got a long ways to go. So it should make a good mower. You guys, thanks for watching. I hope it helped a little bit. Take care.